Thank you, Madam, for these kind words. Um, I'm giving out uh, the keynote address, as my name is already on the board. And uh, the director, in absence, of course, the Director General Institute of, for Cultural Diplomacy, former heads of state and the government, the Governing Council of Institute for Cultural Diplomacy, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. I thank you very much for bestowing on me the honor to deliver a keynote address speech on this momentous occasion. It gives me great pleasure to stand in front of you here in Berlin to share my thoughts about the theme of this conference titled Promoting Global Human Rights Through Cultural Diplomacy. This theme is very important because it comes in when the world is faced with a gross violation of human rights by both individual and the state actors. Human rights advocates, advocates agree that for more than 60 years after its inception, the Universal Human Rights Declaration of Human Rights is still more of a dream than reality. Violations exist in every part of the world. For example, Amnesty International 2015-2016 report shows that more than 122 states tortured or otherwise ill-treated people, and the 30 or more illegally forced refugees to return to countries where they would be in danger. <coughs> in at least 19 countries, war crimes or the other violations of the law of, uh, laws of war were committed by governments or armed groups. The organizations report that armed groups committed human rights abuses in at least 36 countries. More than 60 million people were displaced from their homes worldwide. At least 55% of countries conducted unfair trials. All this information, if you want details, you will find it in Amnesty International Report of 2015-2016. Uh, the details are there. Violation of international human, humanitarian and human rights laws in the context of conflicts has <coughs> remained a challenge. Protracted conflicts in Africa and Asia have caused thousands of civilian deaths and left millions living in fear and insecurity. Countries like Uganda, South Sudan, this is my country, like Uganda, South Sudan, Burundi, Somalia, Syria, and Libya, among others, forced political crisis and escalating violence, which has resulted in thousands of deaths. The Arab Spring in countries like Tunisia, Egypt, and the Middle East was a series of anti-government protests 
uprisings and armed rebellions that spread across the affected regions in early 2011. It had far-reaching consequences as far as violence, security, and human rights are concerned. As a result, many governments have responded to these security threats with a complete disregard for human rights, characterized by arbitrary arrest, impunity, arrest, incommunicado, detentions, extrajudicial kill executions, and the torture and the other forms of ill treatment. Not only that, human rights of many groups, including children, women, religions, re religious people, ethnic and the sexual minorities are violated. This violation of human rights is not only in the developing world. In some developed countries in Europe and America, there is still rampant racial discrimination and the murder of black people. In the face of this gross violation of human rights globally, it is important that stakeholders use less violent means to respond to the challenge. This sets the stage for this role of cultural diplomacy in promoting global human rights. I believe that diplomacy between cultures can foster the culture of tolerance at local country level, regionally and internationally. However, this cannot be fully achieved in the present environment, which is marred with a, tol a lot of uh, intolerance. There seem to be a lot of uh, cultural intolerance. This is evidenced by the rampant isolations and segregation of people because of their religion, race, skin color, gender, and sexual orientations. This has resulted into discrimination and segregation. This situation has made the world a terrible place to some people to live in. It is my belief that cultural diplomacy can play a long role, a big role in promoting the global human rights. However, this cannot be achieved when we still labor, no, harbor cultural intolerance. Let us therefore use this conference to foster a culture of tolerance in order to make the world a better place for all of us to live in without compromising peaceful coexistence and abusing the rights of others. The topic of this conference is a very important issue in the present age of human rights violations, and I hope that we will share insights on how global human rights can be promoted through cultural diplomacy. I look forward to deliberations that will lead to practical recommendations on how we can make the world a better place while maximizing opportunities and achieving freedoms for all individuals in the world. I thank you for attention. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much for that. I would like to open now uh, the floor for you, uh, dear ladies and gentlemen, for your questions and comments. Yes, please. Uh, 
My name is Alice Danladi, and I work with the Multinational Joint Tax Force against Boko Haram, which is a mission under the AU, and I'm based in Chad. A lot has been said yesterday and this morning by Your Excellency. We talk about the Middle East, we talk about Libya, we talk about Egypt, now you've talked about Uganda. A lot is happening in West Africa, especially Nigeria, Chad, Niger, and Cameroon with Boko Haram. I'm the only civilian and the only female in the group that have been to dangerous places to do assessments. And when you see what people have gone through or are going through, you want to wonder, where are our leaders? And if they are there, do they look into each other's faces and tell themselves the bitter truth? One is lucky to be in helm of affairs. Are we transparent enough? Do we look at these downtrodden people as the same blood that flows in us flows in them? Because the international organizations and actors, we say this, but when you go down, what is said is not what is happening in the field. I'm talking out of what I have seen. We're talking about human rights. The basics, people in displaced camps, in refugee camps, we want to say, okay, they are having the basics. But when you look at it and you want to quantify it, as per what UN has said, you find out that it's next to nothing. I think this, I'm saying this so that we all can think about it by the end of this conference. We look at these areas that people are not talking about. And I want to still stand and emphasize, and each day if I will talk, I'll talk about Boko Haram and the countries affected and the people who are suffering. Over two million in Nigeria are displaced. You have refugees, you have how many dead? And you find out that the help, the assistance that is supposed to go to these people, it's often delayed. And I will give an example. When we went through Cameroon, my first trip, we stepped on IED, the second vehicle was affected. Thank God I'm alive to say this. But when we went through Cameroon, I am a nurse to the car, but I've decided to shift, but it's all about humanitarian activity. I wept as a mother, because what I saw parents giving to their children is not fit to be given to a dog. And we have leaders. UK government gave five million for <coughs> to MNJTF. The EU is giving 50 million uh, euros, but it's not getting down to these people to get the essential need as such when they are in need of it. It's all about bureaucracy. We've given this amount, we need to do this, you need to do that, you need to do that. But it's not happening. Please, let's have this behind our mind and by the end of this conference, think not just about the Middle East, Libya, Egypt, uh, wherever, but think about people in the Lake Chad Basin. Because when you talk, it's about poverty. But the, even the empowerment, the education is not there. And when you leave idle youths, you leave mothers who have nothing to do, they will tell you when we don't have anything to do, that's why these people come in and get our kids, recruit them to do these things. Please, leaders, we need to have a second one and have it behind our mind that we need to be transparent in all that we do. Look at ourselves. We're talking about diplomacy and tell ourselves the bitter truth for the benefit of mankind. Thank you. Well, I, first of all, I want to thank you for this uh, pertinent comment. And uh, I want to say I'm sorry I apologize that I did not talk about uh, what, hap what is happening in West Africa. But my speech is uh, strictly uh, linked to a source where I can refer you as I did 
if you want to know what I am saying, it is because I have got it from the International Human Rights. Not that I don't know about who, what is happening, but I would prefer some people who know better to talk about it. I'm sure they're going to talk about it. What I have said does not cover everything. In fact, I want to thank you again for adding to what I'm saying. You have actually expanded my speech, and therefore I want to thank you very much. At the end of the, the meeting, we would make sure that uh, some resolutions cover this area. Thank you very much.